We've had two far side eruptions over the last 24 to 48 hours, and we've got multiple M flare players rotating back into Earth view very soon. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is definitely ratcheting up a bit. The sun has fired several warning shots across the bow, so to speak, as we watch two massive solar storm eruptions from the sun's far side. But I'll talk more about that in the minute. Meanwhile, on the sun's front side, we can see a lot of different active regions, including three numbered regions. We've got region 2842 in the north, plus 2843, and the new one, 2844 in the south. All three of these are not really flare players, but Region 2844, this new one in the south, has been firing some solar storms as of late, so we're going to expect a lot more from that. Meanwhile, we also have this big coronal hole that has been rotating in through the Earth strike zone over the past couple days, and it gave us a little bit of a shot of fast solar wind, which might have even had a mini solar storm buried in it, and it gave some decent aurora views at high latitudes for just a moment before things calmed down. But that is continuing to rotate off to the sun's far side, so we're not going to get any more activity from it. But we do have a filament in the north that we're also watching. This filament region might erupt. It's kind of hard to tell. But we definitely have had recent filament eruptions uh, over the past couple days, so our sun is waking up. And on top of that, solar flux is boosting, so this is good news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see over the past week we kind of started ratcheting down from the B floor with the X-ray flux, and that means that the solar flux began to tank a little bit as well. But this was expected because it was from region 2840, which was rotating to the sun's far side, and that was one of the big M-flare players that we'll be talking about in a bit. Meanwhile, as you see, we, we dropped down to about the, the almost the A floor, right around the 13th, but it sure didn't last long. This, the X-ray flux started climbing again. This was from region 2843 and sure enough by the 14th 15th and 16th definitely it's been popping little b class flares here and there even into the c class range which is good news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders because that means that solar flux is popping back up for us a bit and it's increasing uh, radio propagation on earth's day side but don't worry not from these regions are we seeing anything that's going to give us any big worries for radio blackouts but that's not going to last very long because we do have have some M flare players on the sun's far side that will be rotating into Earth view in about four days or so, and that is definitely going to boost that solar flux a bit, but it's also going to bring a higher risk for radio blackouts. Switching to our solar storm conditions, as you can see, over the past week or so, we've been kind of hovering between unsettled conditions and even quiet conditions. We did have a little bit of a bump up right around the 12th and the 13th, and this was due to kind of a glancing blow of a mini solar storm, but really didn't last all that long and didn't bring us all that much aurora. Then things kind of settled back down again, and then on the 14th, wham, we got hit by a, you know, not too big of a, of a uh, fast wind stream from that massive coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone. And it, there might have even been an embedded mini solar storm in there. It's kind of hard to tell. Meanwhile, it did bring us up to active conditions over about six hours and did bring us a little bit of aurora, but things pretty much have settled down quite quickly after that. We've only been hovering around unsettled conditions and that's going to continue for a little bit, but it's probably even going to quiet down just a little bit more here over this next week. But we're always going to be prepared because we do have region 2844, which is an active solar storm producer. So don't expect these things to stay rock solid because we could get a solar storm launch that's earth directed at any moment. Now returning to the two big solar storms that were fired on the sun's far side, we need to take a look at the coronagraph images. Now these are the coronagraph images from the LASCO instrument on the SOHO spacecraft and the view is from Earth. And we have the 13th on this side and the 15th on this side and you can tell they're both pretty big. Focusing on the 13th, you can see the big signature all the way around the sun. We call that a halo signature and that makes us believe that it's coming toward Earth, but in actuality in this 
this case, it's actually moving away from the sun and moving away from the Earth on the sun's far side. But this was likely fired from region 2840, which was that big M flare player that disappeared around to the sun's far side back, what, around the 10th or something like that. And this region will be rotating back into view in about a week. So we are really paying attention because this region looks like it's still a massive solar storm player. Now, also on the 15th, we had yet another massive uh, solar storm. You can see, again, once again, it's a halo eruption and it's got this massive filament stuff. See all that really dense material right there going off to the south? Now, it's hard to tell if this was actually fired from one region or actually multiple regions because there are three players on the sun's far side that look like they launched almost all in the same day. So some of this could be from the same eruption and some of it could be from slightly different. But nonetheless, this is showing some massive solar storm launch and it's showing that the sun is definitely waking up because we're getting multiple uh, solar storm launches in less than 24 hours. And now for some confirmation that these solar storms are indeed on the far side, we switch to our prediction model, Enlil. This is NASA's version of the model. You're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth off to the right. And as you can see on the 13th, you could see that first solar storm being launched to the sun's far side and not toward Earth completely. This one was likely from region 2840, and we'll be paying close attention to that region as it begins to rotate back into Earth view here in probably about a week. But then on the 15th, take a look at that second one. Now this was the one that was far more massive, and you can see it's a little bit faster and maybe a little bit bigger. So this is from region 2838, maybe even a couple other regions, including maybe 2844 before it rotated into Earth view. So it's going to be very interesting over the next week as we watch all these new players rotate either into Earth view for the first time or into Earth view after we've a full solar rotation. But I'm telling you, when we have solar storms being launched this frequently that are this large, it's definitely tell you Solar Cycles 25 is underway. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun, well, a little bit from the side. And when we take a look at Stereo's view, oh my goodness, you can see region 2842 in the north, 2843 in the south, and the new region 2844. But that's not all. You can also see some bright regions both in the north and in the south beginning to rotate into Stereo's view. And on the 13th, when we had that first big far side eruption, you don't really see any evidence on the Stereo's view, so we do know that that's a further side that's likely region 2840 that's not even in Stereo's view yet. But as we get to the 14th and 15th, look at this. Wham! From region 2844. Wham! From this new region, which is 2838. And then wham! Another re region in the south. So all within 24 hours, we had three big solar storms on the sun's far side, which is likely why that big coronagraph view looks so crazy for the 15th. So what this tells us is that over this next week, we're going to have an ex definitely some more excitement when it comes to space weather. We're likely going to have some M flare players as well as solar storm producers, and that very good chance there's going to be aurora in our future. On top of that, expect the solar flux to start boosting a bit, so we could actually get very close to the good range for radio propagation on Earth's day side here in about a week. Switching to our moon, we are now moving through the first quarter phase on our way to a full moon, with a full moon being on the 24th. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch some dim objects in the sky, you're going to have this bright companion to deal with, so you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we're calming down from that fast solar wind from the coronal hole that's been rotating in through the Earth strike zone over the past couple days, and things are pretty much on their way out. So at high latitudes, NOAA's expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 20% chance of a minor storm over the next couple days. Now at mid latitudes, we're really only expecting unsettled to even normal conditions with about a 10% chance of active conditions over the next couple days 
and easily this will these conditions will stretch out through the rest of this week unless of course region 2844 decides to fire a solar storm and literally within the next couple days uh, it could be within the earth strike zone so this will definitely change if 2844 decides to be a solar storm player Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is pretty calm this week, even though we do have three sunspot regions on the Earth-facing disk. None of them are big flare players, so everything continues to be in the green. We don't have any risk for radio blackouts, which should make the GPS users very happy on Earth's day side. We are also beginning to boost a little bit of that solar flux. We're in the mid-70s right now, but that could easily rise up over this next week or so into the 80s or possibly even into the 90s as some of these new regions rotate into Earth view from the sun's far side. And I guarantee you that M flare risk next week could look very different compared to what it does now. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders enjoy the, the quiet conditions because things are going to get a lot more noisy on Earth's day side next week. Now also because we're still climbing out of solar minimum, we do have a higher cosmic ray flux than we would normally like to have. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, you are in the moderate range for radiation dose. This is the D2 minor range, and this does include deep road, uh, prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is getting to be a little bit exciting. We've had two kind of warning shots fired on the sun's far side that lets us know that there's a lot of activity that's going to be in store for us. But don't worry, we have no Earth-directed solar storms right now. Those were far side eruptions and they're moving away from Earth. So aurora photographers, you can kind of rest easy this week. Things are reasonably quiet. But, you know, you might consider charging your batteries because maybe in about a week or so, we'll start getting some Earth directed solar storms that could bring us some decent aurora. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, things aren't too bad for you either right now. We're getting in the mid-70s for solar flux right now on Earth's day side, which means marginal radio propagation. And enjoy these conditions, especially the quiet conditions, because in about a week, we could have some M-flare players returning and radio blackouts could be in store for you. So along with the boosted solar flux, you know, there could be a lot more noise on the bands. So in Enjoy this little respite. Now also you GPS users, well again, things are probably pretty quiet for you right now and for the moment GPS reception even near dawn and dusk and even at low latitudes is looking pretty good. But all of this could change here very rapidly within this next week. So be on the lookout for reception to be a bit more dodgy probably next week. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.